It's yours, dear, dear Roberto. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, welcome to all of you. Welcome to one of the most important meetings we have uh, during the year. This is the meeting where we interact with the governmental side of the OSC. It's uh, a great opportunity for you to meet uh, with your ambassadors, with the uh, members of the Permanent Council, the members of the OSC autonomous structures, is where the Parliamentary Assembly and the governmental dimension get together. I also want to welcome all the new head of delegations. I will not name them all. The President named them all, but welcome. I think you will find uh, in this assembly a place where you can do a lot of good work in the international arena and uh, it's a great opportunity also for you to meet uh, your colleagues and create personal rapports with your colleagues. Um, uh, the relationship between the OSC Parliamentary Assembly and the governmental side has never been as high as it is today. Your speech, Mr. President, at the ministerial meeting in Milano was very welcomed by many ministers, and it was not just pleasantries or trying to be nice to you, but many ministers approached us and they said they liked a parliamentary assembly who shows an adult posture, uh, a posture of a mature assembly who wants the organization to be strengthened, the organization to be able to deliver. So this is a very good sign for the relationship between the Parliamentary Assembly and the governmental side. And it was confirmed also last month when you delivered here your speech to the Permanent Council. For the second time in a row, and now it's an established practice, the President of the Parliamentary Assembly speaks to the Permanent Council at the beginning of the year, immediately after the head of the governmental side, the chairman in office, makes his priorities. This is a very good practice because you have an opportunity at the beginning of the year to give your report, to give your ideas for the next uh, 12 months, and then in the autumn, after the annual session, you come and present what are the priorities of the annual session of the OSC Parliamentary Assembly for the OSC Ministerial Council. Uh, thank you all members for your participation. 2018 was a record year for the OSC participation, members participation in election observation. We've never had so many members participating in election observations, but also in all the uh, uh, enormous amount of activities that you've done in the committee work, in the uh, um, statutory meeting, in the visits of our very, very active 24-hour, uh, seven days a week president. Um, this has been a, a year of a lot of activities I think is also an exceptional period within the OSC region so I know we are very active but I think we need to be very active because there are a lot of issues that need to be tackled and I'm proud of the fact that uh, many of you can dedicate time to the work uh, in the international arena. I will spare you uh, to go through my entire report. It's uh, distributed, it's on your table, it was distributed a week ago. You can see all the many activities that uh, the International Secretariat has carried out in the service of parliamentarians from Bishkek to today, because this report is about my activities and the activities of my colleagues as International Secretariat from Bishkek to today. So I will not go through that, but I will focus mainly my report here on the priorities of the Slovak chairmanship. The Slovak chairmanship put at the center the people as their first priority. I think this is music for the years of parliamentarians. You are the ones who represent the people, so you are the ones who have that sensitivity to make sure that international bodies, when they work, they deliver for the people. So this is a great uh, idea that the Slovak chairmanship has had. I must say, Minister Lajcak, who you will meet soon uh, in two hours downstairs, was uh, very sincere in putting this as a priority for the Slovak chairmanship because it was also the uh, priority of the UN General Assembly while Lajcak was president of the General Assembly. And on a personal note, Lajcak was also ambassador in Belgrade uh, in 2003 when he visited me in South Serbia. He always told me, Roberto, you have to focus to the people, you have to deliver to the people. So this is something that the Slovak chairmanship has put at the center of this organization and it marries very well the priorities of our parliamentary assembly. The second priority is the prevention of a conflict uh, mediation. This is again what we do on our day-to-day -day activities with all your visits, with the committee visits, the president activities. I must say that uh, uh, tomorrow in the first committee you will hear also from the OSC what are the tools that the OSC has given itself to deal with uh, the so-called frozen conflicts. You will hear about uh, the 5 plus 2 in Moldova, the trilateral working group for Ukraine. You will hear about uh, the uh, Minsk co-chairs and the Minsk group for the uh, Azerbaijan, Armenia conflicts over Nagorno-Karabakh. You will hear all these uh, uh, tools that the OSC has given it itself to deal with conflicts. The idea of this session is also for you to hear what the OSC is doing 
And so for you to see what is the niche for parliamentarians on how we can interact with what the OSC governmental side is doing, there's no point in us reinventing the wheel or coming up with new, um, new mediation platforms or new activities if the OSC is already put in place some uh, tools. But it's important that parliamentarians fit into these tools and add the value that leaders uh, from parliament can bring into this. Uh, I must say, besides those tools, there is also a lot of silent diplomacy. Uh, if I can just give you an example, on the 2nd of March uh, next uh, week, I think, uh, a blogger in Azerbaijan will be released from prison. Uh, this is uh, um, also a lot of work that has been done by our Vice President, uh, Azai Guliev, but by President Saratelli, who in silent diplomacy, in discussions with the leadership in Azerbaijan, in discussions with the current Prime Minister, who was the head of the cabinet of uh, the President of Azerbaijan, in silence, discussed, requested that this issue is addressed, went to visit the person in prison, and now the person gets released. So these are Hopefully. sometimes tools that we also have, silent diplomacy besides, of course, the normal tools, which is you know, making statements, criticizing. But we in the OSC have all these kind of tools to deal with issues, and sometimes uh, we use the bat, sometimes the carrot, sometimes the silence also helps in solving issues. So thank you very much, President, for this work. Thank you. The third priority of the Slovak chairmanship is multilateralism. Your presence here, the large delegation from the U.S. delegation also testifies to the fact that there is an interest from elected politicians to reinforce multilateral uh, formats. I know in Europe we have a lot of uh, problems, uh, we have elections soon, more and more uh, national countries are inward looking. In, across the Atlantic also, there is more and more interest in focusing on the domestic agenda, but it's important to keep alive the multilateral uh, sector, and your presence last year and your presence uh, this year already testifies to the fact that the members of parliament believe in uh, using multilateral uh, tools to deal with issues which are multinationals. You cannot deal with the issue of uh, the challenges of uh, uh, migration, uh, movement of people, terrorism, others, uh, cyber threats through a national only perspective. You have to have multilateral formats. And so it's very important that you members of parliament ensure that those who are, um, let's say, functionaries of international organizations use these tools effectively. And you have to use your, uh, let's say, your, your strength to make sure that uh, functionaries are delivering on these issues on the multilateral arena. Um, Doris Barnett mentioned about visibility. This was, uh, uh, for the Bureau members who are here, was also an issue that was debated in Milano at the last Bureau meeting. Many members have asked us uh, to increase the visibility of the OSC, increase the visibility of what you do, because it's important also for you when you go back to your constituents to say, why did you go to Tajikistan or to Azerbaijan? What is it in for us? You know, so you need to also be able to sell what you do on the international arena to your national constituents. Mm -hmm. But in order to be more visible, I think we also need to have the OSC name to be more visible. Sometimes the OSC name is not uh, that visible. So we have uh, recently given, I personally handed over to Minister Leitchak last week, a project proposal that would uh, allow the uh, chairman in office in December at the next ministerial meeting uh, to present uh, um, in concrete uh, ways, maybe through a video or through the presence of some people, who are the beneficiaries of the OSC product, of all that we do here, and that, because there are people in flesh and blood who have benefited from the work of the OSC, which are totally unknown to the ministers. I have been in ministerial meetings, I've been privileged sometimes to sit with them. Sometimes they come to these meetings in between a NATO ministerial meeting, a European Council meeting, they read a statement prepared by the ambassadors, but they don't really have the focus on what they're doing in that OSC context. So it's very important that uh, at the ministerial meeting, when you have the attention of all the ministers, that the chairman in office can present to the ministers, so at least we get the attention of the ministers, that the OSC is doing some concrete work, some visible work. I would like to give you a concrete example of uh, beneficiaries of the OSC work. In this room, I don't know, we have a colleague here, Sheriff Abdili. I don't know, Shera, if you are in the room, please stand up. Uh, Shera is a, a mission member from the OSC mission in Serbia. He's worked for 18 years in the OSC mission in Serbia. 
there is peace and stability in southern Serbia. There is no longer a conflict, thanks to the work of individuals like this. You will never hear about Sher Abdili on the news uh, or on the main network. But it's him and many others who have ensured, that, for example, in southern Serbia, that we have a multi-ethnic uh, police component in southern Serbia, that we have multi-ethnic self-governments in southern Serbia, that the Serbian government and the Albanian community have worked together to improve the situation in southern Serbia, and that uh, the Serbian government has very constructively engaged with the Albanian community to create the conditions of peace in that region of southern Serbia. This is not a news anymore. For 18 years, there's been peace, there's been uh, harmony there, there is integration of minorities in the state structures of Serbia, but this is thanks to individuals like him. So what I would like Minister Lajcek to do is to use that example, but the examples that we have in Azerbaijan, in Armenia, in Tajikistan, the Bishkek Academy, the Tetovo University, there's so many projects that the OSC does, that the OSC field missions, the institutions and the secretariat do, so in order to bring to the attention of the ministers, look, the OSC delivers, the OSC does things concrete for the day-to-day -day life of ordinary citizens. So this concludes my report, Mr. President. Now, with your permission, if you allow me two more minutes, I would like to take a little personal note uh, on this. So after um, careful considerations uh, and consultations uh, with the leadership, uh, Doris Barnett, the treasurer, president, Lord Bonnes, and the members of the bureau, and uh, least but not last, uh, consultations with uh, my family and the other bosses, I think uh, Ivana is also here, and my children. Uh, we've discussed, I don't know which one is the more difficult uh, to, to deal with, uh, which bosses, uh, but uh, no, the children are not here. But uh, we uh, have come to the conclusion that I would like uh, to uh, continue on uh, this uh, uh, work for a second mandate. Uh, now, uh, I will not go through all the achievements that we've made uh, in the last uh, years that have been uh, in this position, but I just want to mention a few. We have strengthened the political clout of the other organization, as I said before, and now the assembly is a self-standing assembly respected by the governmental dimension of the OSC. We have created ad hoc committees on terrorism and migration answering to very important political challenges that we had, and we have created for this assembly instruments, tools that do concrete work. I mean, you will have seen yesterday the Committee on Terrorism and today the Committee on Migration. How much work they do concrete is not simple visits or tourism. It's actually concrete visits that go in depth to solve problems and to bring parliamentary uh, contributions to the solutions of this problem. We have had the highest number of participants to all our meetings. We have secured venues for this parliamentary assembly. This is a parliamentary assembly which doesn't have a parliament like the Strasbourg Council of Europe. We don't have an hemicycle. We uh, count on participating states who are willing to host our meetings. And it is unprecedented, but uh, now we have venues until 2022, and instead of us going to please beg uh, countries uh, to host our meetings, it's countries now coming to us and say, Roberto, we would like to host this winter meeting or uh, this autumn meeting or these annual sessions. So this is another sign that there is a great interest in the participating states. We have had uh, a budget increase last year. I will say this uh, with a little voice, especially in these rooms, because the OSC still doesn't have a budget and has a challenge in passing a zero nominal growth budget. Our budget has been passed last year, and uh, there's been a lot of support, as you've heard also from the Treasurer, to even look at uh, additional resources for the Secretariat. So we very much appreciate this. Of course, we don't want to be selfish. We are happy that you are giving us uh, additional resources, but please also convince your constituents and your ministries uh, back at home to approve the OSC budget, which is very important for this organization to operate. Uh, we have uh, done some internal reforms. Uh, I don't want to give you too many details. You've heard me saying this before, but now we have staffing rules and regulations. We have administrative rules so that you can see that our uh, external auditor can audit our accounts according to some set of rules that you have adopted. We have uh, also done a lot of uh, external reforms, uh, the election code that you will discuss later, the uh, new practices in this assembly to have more time for debate. This is uh, a very good uh, outcome. But Two issues I'm very proud of, Mr. President. One is the positive atmosphere that we've managed to create within this parliamentary assembly. You've heard before, of course, there are many problems, there are many challenges, but at least in this forum, we sit together, we talk, we criticize each other, but we also try to create possibilities for personal relations, which can be also conducive to the solution of bigger problems. 
And last but not least, on uh, my first election in Helsinki, I promised uh, that uh, this international secretariat would ensure that the leadership of this assembly belongs to politicians and that uh, the politicians in all his articulation, the president, the bureau, the standing committee, as the leadership of the assembly decides which is the direction where we go and the secretariat is here at the service of this uh, political leadership. So with those words is, that, uh, is to that uh, political leadership uh, that I now hand over the renewal of my mandate and uh, I hope that uh, I will be able to serve you for the next uh, years. Thank you very much, Mr. President. <laughs> Thank you very much, Roberto. Uh, I think uh, we don't have any, uh, let's say, planned or uh, prepared uh, speakers list here. I know that, uh, of course, it's very important for everybody uh, to listen to the Secretary General as far as staff is doing a greater portion of our, uh, let's say, successful or close to successful, uh, sometimes even more not successful, unfortunately, job, but it's our work. So, uh, but uh, uh, I'd like to ask you maybe to limit uh, questions or time or, or speaking time. Uh, I understand it's an important issue and especially the last part which uh, I myself not questioning at all, but I also will uh, short. Uh, I will short, I will make short remarks on Roberto's proposal or his, uh, let's say, testimony. Uh, I think uh, Margareta first, and then I will make. Uh, uh, yeah, but there was a Sofia, and then uh, Marquis Azai. Uh, Senior uh, please, please, and, and short, short. short and sweet and uh, nice, <laughs> I don't know. Sweet, I hope. <laughs> uh, I will put some chocolate uh, That's why, on because my of your Swiss. So Swiss, Grazie. sweet Swiss. Grazie, Senor Presidente. Yes, thank you, President. Thank you, Secretary General. Well, I think the whole Swiss delegation, we all think to have a Secretary General like Roberto, who's so active and so versatile and so dynamic and so able and ho who serves our interests so splendidly, I think it's a hu huge fortune. It's something we in the OSCE here all profit. Thank you, Roberto, and we'll think of you when it comes to uh, renewing your mandate. Of course we will. Mr. President, let me switch now to another national language of my country, Switzerland. We're very pleased, and I'd like to pay tribute to the report in writing and orally from Roberto. You've said that to the cooperation between the OSCE PA and other aspects has never been so successful as it ha is today. You said so most convincingly and presented examples because you are so skilled at establishing direct contact with authorities and governments at an, an operative level. So might I just recall that as a regional platform, the OSCE precisely now in this tense political situation, a tense situation among international treaties which have sadly uh, been rescinded. In this situation we find ourselves in today, we and our populations are anxious, rightly anxious, at a renewed arms race. So let me just recall very briefly that the existing instruments and principles of this organization can be used much better. They can be used further, precisely in the area of arms control. It's a matter of three instruments and principles. We're talking firstly about confidence and security uh, building measures. They're often just seen together with the Vienna document, but de facto, they're rather a question of an attitude towards security. 
they are built on the understanding that without mutual confidence, we cannot achieve any security. And without security, we cannot establish peaceful relations between OSCE states, which are embedded in completely different security architecture. Secondly, we have the activity relating to verification amongst its uh, different participating states and networks of military personnel from our respective participating states that works very well. And thirdly, and I'll draw to a close, we have structured dialogue. And precisely in recent years, that has provided an opportunity to address controversial issues, and it can help us to prevent the risk of military conflict. So thank you, President. Let's use these instruments and let's, as MPs, let's ensure that our governments and our authorities use these instruments, these principles, now more than ever. Thank you. Uh, and now, Sofio uh, Katsarava, followed by Makis Voridis. Thank you, Roberto, uh, for the report, uh, which, as always, is very interesting, but not just is interesting, but uh, uh, forward-looking, which is very important, and thanks for your steps for increasing visibility of this organization, because it does deserve uh, to have more, more visibility because of the work that it does. Um, and in fact, thank you for deciding to renew your mandate as Secretary General of this organization, uh, because incidentally, this is not for the first time that I am saying that as a member of other uh, parliamentary assemblies, uh, I keep highlighting that OSCEPA stands out as truly open, responsive, very well organized and innovative organization, and this is largely due to your efforts, your work, and uh, the work that your team uh, does and the team that stands by you. So I would say that no one is indispensable, but there are some people uh, who you would belong to this category, uh, and that's you, uh, Roberto, and uh, I would like to thank you very much for all your efforts, not least because you also, in addition to everything else, uh, continuously encourage gender balance at all levels, and I'm looking forward to working with you all for the next uh, two years. That's my mandate, not yours, uh, and wish you all success uh, to the Secretariat, to you and colleagues um, in this room. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, dear Marcus, please, and then uh, I think uh, Azerbaijan delegation. Azai, you will speak, okay. And uh, Pascal and... Yeah, I know, I know, I know. So, all of them. No, I'll, I'll, President, I'll be very, very brief. I'll just want to share with um, uh, our colleagues here my experience. I am 10 years now member in this parliamentary assembly. I'm growing old with, in this parliamentary assembly. <laughs> and um, I've, I've experienced the different phases that we've passed at different levels, especially with the governmental structures. I must say that is due to Roberto's work that this situation has changed. The Parliamentary Assembly is now facing um, new challenges, but uh, it is quite well respected and accepted in the governmental structure. And I must say that, again, there are innovations during these years that have happened, especially with the creation of ad hoc committees, which they have given a new boost in the work being carried out by the Parliamentary Assembly, but also raised the visibility of this assembly, but OEC as an international organization. I'm not saying that we are at the level that we want to proceed and we want to arrive. A lot of work needs to be carried out. We need to think media strategies that will show the work that it is being carried out in this assembly. I must say that it's a great fortune that we have George as president of the assembly, who is, you know, really active on that. And the combination of the two of you 
is a really great fortune for this assembly. Now I want to thank you for the decision that you stayed with us. And most of all, I want to thank your wife for joining this decision, who is really suffering from this activity. And uh, thank her for supporting you in this decision. So again, thank you very much for the decision and the candidacy. We hope we're going to be working on that tempo for the next coming years. Thank you very much, Marcus. Uh, Azai, and uh, then we have two or three speakers. Please. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Thank you, dear Secretary General, dear friends. Uh, since it is my first speech, Mr. President, I'd like to also thank you for your tremendous work that you carried out for the last three months since uh, Bishkek session. I really appreciate that the OEC Parliamentary Assembly has been so active in many spheres of our fields. I also uh, like to join in thanking uh, our friend, Secretary General Roberto Mantelde, for his really, really very professional uh, manager skills. Uh, my friend, uh, Marcus Voridis mentioned here that he is here for 10 years. He is getting older, but I would say that I am oldest than Marcus Voridis. I am here for 14 years. So I know I have seen many people, many faces, many challenging issues, and also many, I would say, injustice. But since assuming the uh, office as a Secretary General, uh, Roberto Mantella, I would say without any exaggeration that many things have been changed in good and in positive uh, direction. I think uh, Secretary General needs to be uh, supported by our assembly for sure, for many reasons. First reason uh, is that I really, uh, we have already witnessed that the, how he is a good uh, team builder and he organized the work of a secretariat in a uh, better in professional manner. And also, I would specifically want to mention, that was not mentioned here by my colleagues, that uh, the work of the Secretariat has been eliminated totally any type of double standards and the selectiveness, which is very important for the unity and credibility of the Assembly. This is why, uh, Roberto, I think uh, this type of uh, things and the, your activities should be continued. Also, of course, it would be uh, great, and it should be noted that uh, we have uh, now carrying out certain type of reforms in our secretariat. I think we have a good team uh, together uh, with president and the uh, bureau members who are really key to support these reforms in modernizing our activities, in perform performing or bettering the, the activities of the assembly and also the being ready for any, any uh, emergency and uh, responding to any emergency that occurred in our activities. So it is very important that we are timely managing all these uh, less challenging issues. Another important thing uh, I think has to be mentioned here that uh, our assembly um, could able to establish good relationship with our international partners, such as uh, Council of Europe, uh, European Parliament, NATO Parliamentary Assembly, which is really uh, pretty much appreciated. And also the institutions uh, of OEC institutions also have been coming together under uh, the umbrella of the Assembly for many, many important issues and the ch challenging agenda of the, of the current uh, OEC area. So, dear friend, I think uh, all these things, of course, uh, um, make us possible to say that uh, the Secretary General mandate should be renewed. And of course, I really uh, support, and I do believe that all my colleagues will support the mandate of our Secretary General for the second uh, term. 
So this is why uh, I, I think it is in the best interest of our assembly. And uh, Mr. President, I also thank you that you supported this uh, the, the idea, this proposal. I think we have to be united and uh, to get united for the best interest and for the unity of our assembly, of course, and for also tackling the challenging issues that stands in the agenda of the assembly. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, dear Azai, uh, Lord Bonus, then Pascal Alizar, then the last speaker will be Doris Barnett. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Like other speakers, I want to pay tribute to the Secretary General and the work that he has done. He made promises to uh, the Standing Committee and the Bureau when he assumed office, and he has fulfilled those promises. Uh, I think it's entirely appropriate that uh, he should be seeking a renewal of his mandate, and indeed that we as members uh, would wish to support that, because whilst many things have happened, it is, as the Secretary General himself has said, an ongoing process. And we want to ensure that that process of continues. Uh, uh, Roberto, you have transformed the relationships uh, between, I think, not just the, the uh, other institutions of the OSCE and the different organizations, uh, but also the relationships, if I may say so, with the members of the Assembly and the Secretariat itself, which is very, very important. Um, so I have no doubt at all that the tributes that have been paid to the your work this morning are more than deserved, as indeed, as uh, my colleague from Greece said, the tribute to your wife for allowing you to do this. <laughs> However, uh, there is just one aspect which I would like to draw the attention uh, of the Standing Committee. Um, in our enthusiasm, we mustn't forget that this is a rule-based organisation and we are committed to openness and transparency. And the rules of the uh, Assembly uh, require that on appointment, election, reappointment, uh, notice is given of intentions uh, that, that, is, that that is to happen. And therefore, um, it's an obligation on the Bureau to do this. It's not up for a decision, it's in the rules. So, in our without in any way damping our enthusiasm, I just would like to make it clear that following this meeting, we should issue on behalf of the Bureau a notice advising that uh, the Secretary General is seeking a renewal of his mandate, emphasizing the work that he has done, the ongoing work, but in accordance with the rules and in the interests of transparency, we give notice in the appropriate way of that, which so that if, if in the unlikely event, but if anybody wishes to be considered, uh, they can be considered. And I would think that that notice should ensure that any intentions to be considered should be in the hands of uh, the President uh, before the Bureau meeting. That will enable the Bureau in April uh, to uh, meet, make a recommendation to the Standing Committee. I emphasize this is in no, I am in no way uh, suggesting uh, that we should do other than uh, renew the mandate, but we must stay true to the rules and true to transparency, if only to ensure that Roberto, when he is, as I hope, reappointed, there will be nobody and no delegation that would be able to point a finger and say this was not done openly or in accordance with the rules. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, dear Peter. Uh, Pascal, please, and then we will conclude with Doris. Oui, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. I will be very brief, uh, Mr. President. And uh, following on from what was just said by my colleagues, I've been here for only five years, but I have, uh, as have many of others, many others among you, I have gone through the transition with the arrival of Roberto. Many things were said about his report, about the content, about the substance, and I share what was said. I'm not going to repeat what has already been said about this. I would simply like to uh, mention that uh, the 
uh, forum that we've been work the forum that we've been working with uh, we've seen a lot more dynamism over these last years this has been reflected in the different reports and a lot more transparency also and I share uh, here the words said by Lord Bonus just before and uh, we've seen a lot more democracy also in the internal functioning and this uh, deserves uh, to be mentioned I think also that uh, there's the goal of more international recognition and this is ongoing work and also the uh, issues that we've been discussing uh, now they're no easier than what were dealt with in the past as we've seen the, this morning but I can say that we perhaps have been, taken a more serene approach a more open approach in dealing with these issues uh, but this uh, has not uh, detracted from the rigor which we're putting into this and uh, also there's the uh, the team spirit and uh, and a very good uh, leadership that we have here with you George and Roberto and so I think that overall it's a good piece of news that Roberto has taken the decision to continue his mandate and as the other colleagues uh, have said I support this I support this with great pleasure Merci beaucoup, cher Pascal, and yeah. yes, well, I think it would be exceedingly difficult to summarize what we've heard, but I think you can only find what actually someone's capable of if you actually uh, challenge them. And I think this is the case, Roberto, I don't think he wasn't so convinced initially that he could actually achieve all of this, but he went about this in the best possible way, as we all know. But Roberto, you can't go about this without a strong woman behind you who provides you with the time to go about it, but equally important, you have a great team at your side which helps you to do this because you couldn't do it on your own. And you have uh, actually managed to form a splendid team around you and you can see that in the way that you work together it's apparent that it works not just for you you're pleased to work with them but vice versa and that's to your and to all of our benefit thank you for that but at this point expressly I'd like to thank all of you here at the front who are at the back of the room as well and to maybe not in this room, all of you, because you make all of this possible. And I think we can be proud that you, we have the right people at the right place. And I'd be pleased if you were to be re-elected. You have my 100% support, and I hope that the others see it in the same way. Thank you. Well, thank you all, dear friends and colleagues. Uh, before Roberto will uh, say his uh, let's say final remarks for this session, of course. Uh, I thought it's maybe a time to serve champagne. So I heard very, very nice, uh, you know, the speeches here. And as, as a Georgian, you know, quite customary for us to have a toast type things, but it's uh, based on realities. It's not to flatter anybody, to please anybody. Uh, I think that uh, you're reflecting that realities that we see. Uh, I'm a person who is working with Roberto, let's say, 24 hours. And this morning I was more than convinced, of course. 24 hours? Yeah, 24 hours on phone, of course, part of this work. But I was more than convinced this morning when I posted in our internal chat one requirement to get some version of uh, one document. And it was at 5 in the morning or very, very late night. And uh, the first who responded to that, it was Roberto. So that's also showed that a small example, uh, the, how to say, uh, competence, readiness, enthusiasm, uh, dedication to the work. Uh, what I noticed in the last uh, few years when we are in this capacity together to lead this organization with your support, of course, uh, with your permission and backing, that here we don't see you know, any personal attempt to fulfill let's say, some personal ambitions to be, a, as a secretary general, but really to be a person who's moving organization forward, who's trying to, trying to accommodate to all of you, not only president of this organization. We couldn't do anything without staff. You know, 
this very well. So uh, we have our own, own, own capacities, but in this work, you need everyday support. You need everyday expertise. You need everyday readiness to be, you know, also to survive from the emergencies that we have. A lot of time around, around uh, the year and uh, all the time. So, uh, I, oh, of course, I expected uh, your reactions, and I myself are more than confident that we have to continue in this uh, in this uh, spirit. And I'd like to congratulate Roberto with, uh, with his reflections and with assessment that you heard. Uh, I would uh, also myself be happy to continue five more years with you in this capacity, but presidential term is, is not that long. And it lets me uh, only one, one term, but no more. So you are more lucky in this. But the organization is lucky to have, let's say, executive um, uh, the officer of this organization with his whole team uh, to be very effective and very efficient. And we also we are very critical and we are doing a lot of critical analysis and we are not ever self-complacent and we say that's self-satisfactory. We need where are our weaknesses and believe me, I'm very frank. We, are, we have very critical thinking what's better for this organization uh, for future, for years to come to maintain that credibility and authority that we achieved together. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, Lord Bonus uh, already stated the uh, results of our also internal discussion and in a subcommittee of rules and procedures. We have legitimate right as a standing committee, according to our rules, uh, to renew without the contest without uh, international, let's say, a call or something like that. We have this right according to this rule, but there are also requirements in the rule and a very concrete requirements for the sake of transparency and for the sake of uh, democratic, let's say, principle to, to spread this message and as, as it happened also uh, several times in many other organizations, do it now and do it more transparently. So, as uh, Lord Bonnet said, we will uh, very, you know, in the coming days, uh, just send out the letter informing also the, the public, the, there will be a public announcement that uh, there will be, <coughs> let's say, a re-election or renewal of this post, but I think uh, attitude and disposition of uh, leadership and all the standing committee members is very clear. So thank you, Roberto, for what you did, and uh, once again, congratulations with a very good result of your work, which I heard myself and convinced once again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I think I will take a, a blood test to see the level of sugar after uh, this, uh, this session, but uh, jokes apart, thank you very much for your comments. I just want to make uh, three very short points. One. Many people have thanked me for the decision uh, to continue. The decision is yours. I mean, this is my intention, my desire to, to continue in this position, but it will be the Bureau who will decide and then the Standing Committee who will uh, ratify the decision. So it's, uh, at this point in time, there's also only my desire. It's, uh, it's up to you because this is the point. The leadership of this assembly belongs to you. So you are the ones who decide yes or no. So, um, Lord Bonnes, you made a reference to the rules, absolutely. I think uh, we have to be as transparent as possible. I have made it a point of my tenure to introduce uh, rules where there were no rules. There were no staffing rules, and I said there must be a rule. The principle of hiring and firing staff is not my cup of tea. I want to have basic rules on how to conduct the staff. I want to have rules that decide how the administration is run and what are the financial guidelines of this organization. I took the OSC a key on financial rules and regulations and made it the OSCPA a key. So absolutely it would be uh, contradictory to my history if uh, for my own uh, renewal I would try to sneak in and try to you know get a renewal let's say okay well as everybody agrees here let's just do it and forget about the rules absolutely not we have to follow the rules to the letter and I think uh, you've indicated there will be um, a notice sent uh, internally externally next week and uh, the bureau meeting on the 8th of April will decide on the renewal of these candidates or if there are any interested parties uh, on who should be the candidate presented to the standing committee on the 4th of July and then on the 4th of July 
this body, the Standing Committee, will make a decision on whether the Bureau indication is acceptable to you or not. So absolutely maximum respect for the rules. This is my desire and my request. And uh, the third, but uh, not uh, least important point, many of you have underlined is this is indeed a team effort I mean this is not a one-man show uh, you have seen my colleagues uh, they are working 24 7 themselves as well and uh, they sometimes not are as visible as I am because I have traveling with the president but it is indeed a team effort and uh, the uh, nice words that you have expressed uh, to, for me today, I think it's nice words that uh, could be definitely shared with all the colleagues uh, in this team. Uh, we work as a team and we work uh, together in order to service you better. Thank you very much and Thank let's you. move on.